Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Daryl. Uh, I'm one of the uh, trainers here at uh, Big Harry Dog. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at uh, QuickBooks Point of Sale, doing uh, purchasing and receiving. We'll take a look at uh, how to receive, uh, how to create purchase orders. Uh, we'll look at adding inventory. We'll look at creating a purchase order. Uh, we'll look at adding existing inventory. Uh, to a purchase order. We'll see how you can create new inventory uh, while you are doing a purchase order. We'll take a look at how to edit and delete a purchase order. We'll look at uh, using receiving vouchers. We'll look at how to create a receiving voucher, how to reference a purchase order. Uh, we'll look at how you can create a purchase order without, uh, or how to create a voucher without a purchase order. We'll take a look at how you can fix mistakes on a voucher. We'll also look at adding freight and fees as well as adjusting item cost or quantity if needed. And we'll look at entering billing info so that that information will go over to your QuickBooks accounting. So we've got our QuickBooks point of sale. We have an existing list of inventory that uh, we can work from. To create a purchase order, we're going to go down to so now you can see my screen. So to uh, create a purchase order, we're going to go down to Purchase orders. Under purchase orders, you'll notice there are two things that are required, a purchase order number and a vendor. We want to uh, make sure that uh, we include both. The purchase order number can be generated automatically by uh, point of sale. It will generate the purchase order number uh, even if you don't have one to enter. If you have one to enter, you can enter your own. I have my purchase order number set up where they should record the vendor I choose and add the vendor name to my purchase order number. I like that because I think it makes it a little easier to find the purchase order when it comes in because you know who the vendor is that sent you the uh, merchandise. And instead of having to just look for number 75, uh, you can go through and find the vendor and then look through and find the open purchase orders you might have for that particular vendor. Purchase orders have four basic statuses. You have an open purchase order. That's generally a purchase order that you have placed with the vendor and are waiting for all that merchandise to show up. You have a pending purchase order. That's one that you're still working on and haven't yet placed with a vendor. You have a closed purchase order. That's one that you've received everything that uh, that vendor planned to send you. And you have a suggested purchase order, which is one that the system suggested based on the uh, My mind, my mind went south. I hate it when that happens. Based on the uh, the number of items that you want to always be able to keep on hand. I've got to cheat. I hate it when that happens. And my mind goes completely south. based on the reorder point. Yeah, that's it. So if you set a reorder point up on your items and your items reach that reorder point or below that reorder point, then they will show up on your suggested purchase order list, which you can access from the inventory and reminders. And under inventory reminders, 
if you have any items that are at or below their purchase order point, their reorder point, they will show up when you go to reminders. You can look at it by which store those reminders are for. If you set up individual reorder quantities for the stores, or you can simply look at it for the company. You can see here my on-hand quantity, my available quantity, and my reorder point. If I was to create a suggested purchase order, I would do that by going down here to Suggest PO. That's going to open up my Suggest PO. From there, I can say, don't suggest any quantity, so I'll figure it out myself. Or I can do the really weird one, which is bring my quantities back up to the reorder point plus X number. The reason that was kind of weird is you probably don't want to carry the same amount above that reorder point for everything. So that one's kind of an odd one. The one that is really cool is I want to order enough stock to last me for 30 days based on what I sold in the last 30, 60, 90, 120 days, whatever number you want to put in there. And then it will go look and see what you sold during that time period you enter. It will then uh, divide whatever answer it finds for what you sold by the number of days you're looking at, multiply that by the number of days you want to keep stock for, and then that will be the suggested quantity that it recommends you order in order to maintain 30 days worth of stock, or 15 days, or seven days. Just all depends on how often you're going to reorder from that particular vendor. I'm going to do a don't suggest. I can choose to order for all my vendors, and it shows me all the vendors that have stuff that are going to come up. Or I can pick one single vendor and just see what that one has. So if I pick Toy Smith and say OK, it shows me I have this one item from Toy Smith that I am below my reorder quantity, and I can choose to reorder more of those. Because I said I would choose the quantities, I would need to enter a quantity in here to say how many I want to order. So if I enter a quantity, I can then create a purchase order by clicking on Create PO. It will then generate that purchase order for me. I can have it show me a list view, or I can have it print it out, or I can have it email it uh, the purchase order, assuming you're using Microsoft Outlook as your email handler. You can actually email that purchase order out directly to the vendor. And if I say OK, I can see that purchase order that I just created. And it shows me that I've ordered six of these. I can save that purchase order as an open purchase order or I can leave it as suggested, as a suggested purchase order. That means I may want to come back later and look and see what other items I have that I need to order from Toy Smith and add those to the purchase order before I finalize the order. I could then pick on one of the other ones and take those items off my list. Or I could even generate all the purchase orders at once by choosing all vendors, and it would then generate the full uh, purchase orders. All right. So if we go back to doing a manual purchase order, we're going to go back, go back to purchase orders. I'm going to select my vendor. I can then add items to my purchase order. Before I do that, you'll notice up here at the top, I have a shipping address. Where are they going to send this merchandise to? As well as a billing address. If you have more than one store, then you may want to choose which store you're sending the information to. 
if you choose that up front, then when you do a store exchange for your multiple stores, it will send that purchase order to the store that is going to be receiving that information. That store can then receive an, that information that those items when that purchase order shows up, and they will be able to process them in and report back to headquarters that they have received those items. Otherwise, if you receive them all at headquarters, you will have to later transfer those items to the remote store so that the remote store has those items. All right. So to add items, I could come out here and I could come down here to enter items. I could enter an item number. I could type in a description of an item I wanted. Or I could come over here to the find items. From here, I could add a brand new item that I currently don't have in inventory. If I'm ordering something new that uh, I've never carried from this vendor before, I can also come down here to go to item list. That shows me a list of all my stuff. I can scroll over here to the left, make sure I'm sorted by vendor, come down here and find my Acme products. I can go to the dot quantity column and I can decide how many items it is that I want to order. And I can enter the quantities for each item. by running down my list of stuff that I can order from that particular vendor. When I've entered everything I want, I can then do a select, and it adds all those items to my purchase order. So I can quickly and easily add items to a purchase order. I can also modify one of these items. If I have something that I entered wrong and I realized I wanted a different quantity, I could come over here and I could change the quantity number to a different quantity. If I decided I didn't want that at all, I could also remove that item from my list. I could also change the cost of an item if the vendor told me this item has a new cost. If I needed to add a new item, maybe this logo t-shirt now comes in a 3XL and I want to add that as a new item, I can go to my little pull down here and choose new item or go to find items and choose add new item either way. I'm going to end up in the same place. I'm going to end up in Add New Item. And I can choose what department this item is for that I'm adding. The part that annoys me a little bit is that it asks me who the vendor is. I mean, I just told it that I'm doing Acme in a purchase order. You would think it would default to that. I've got my item name and my item name is a logo t-shirt my attribute is going to be white and it's going to be a size 3xl depending on how i want to enter it I can enter it the way I choose. My regular price on that item is going to be $15. My cost on it is going to be $8. My average cost, I don't have to enter because I am receiving that item fresh. I haven't previously had that item in my system, and so therefore, 
I can see it that way. Next thing, because this item is kind of part of a style, I can go to Edit Style. I can save my changes. And I apparently didn't name it exactly right because it didn't show up. So that tells me I've got two choices. I can enter it that way. And it will enter it in my item list somewhere. Or it dropped it because I didn't do the final save. But if I wanted to add to this style, I might prefer, I would say it is that one, except I only see two XLs instead of three. But if I wanted to add something to an existing style, I can add it that way, or I could go pick one of those existing items. I could edit the item, and I can see there that existing item. I could go to my item list. I could find that item. I could edit the item there. There, I could go to Add or Edit Style, and I could add that three XL size, and then I could add how many of those shirts I wanted to order. And when I save and select, it will add those all to my purchase order. So I can either add an item individually, or I could go find the item in the item list there, edit the item list, and add an item to the style that didn't previously exist in that style. When I'm happy with my purchase order, I simply save it or save and print it. If I save and print it, I will get a purchase order, which looks like that. It shows me all my items, it shows me my vendor, it shows me my address, I've got my purchase order number, and I've got all the various information about that purchase order. I now have a purchase order in my purchase order list. And you may be saying, well, what about that suggested purchase order that we entered? Well, what this number shows, it only shows open purchase orders. To see that suggested purchase order, I would have to come up here and say all purchase orders, and then I can see that suggested purchase orders and the closed purchase orders that I previously have in my purchase order list. And speaking of closed purchase orders, a purchase order only becomes a closed purchase order after you have received all the information off of that purchase order. Once you've received everything, you really have no use for that purchase order. That purchase order now has become a receiving voucher, and you should do what's called maintain a clean purchase order file. And what that means is when you have closed purchase orders, you should select the closed purchase orders go up here and delete them so that they don't clutter up your purchase order list. If I wasn't going to add anything else to this uh, Toy Smith order, I would go in here and change the status from suggested to open. But I'm not ready to do that yet. So I have my one single purchase order. Any questions at this point?
No? All right. So, now that we've got a purchase order, when that merchandise shows up, we need to receive that merchandise. To receive merchandise, you go to receiving vouchers. Now, in receiving vouchers, you need to enter a vendor. And if I go up here and I enter Acme as my vendor, if I could spell, I get this notice that I have an outstanding purchase order. And I can tell it, yes, I want to receive options from my outstanding purchase order. The only problem with that is, if you have more than one order, you can't see what is on that order. And so that's not my preferred way to receive items that I have created on a purchase order. What I would prefer to do is go to my purchase order list, view my existing purchase orders, find my open purchase orders, and I can see here the merchandise that I have. If you can't see the merchandise, then you're probably in a list view of your items. And you see the vendor name, you see the number of items that you've ordered, you see that it's 100% unfilled, meaning you haven't received anything off of this order. You see your total purchase price of this merchandise. From here, I could go to, I want to receive items, but I like to do a collapse so I can see the items that are on the purchase order. When I say, yes, this is what I just received, then I go up here to receive items, and I've got two choices. One, I could expand this box out a little bit so I can see what's going on. I can go over here to the dot quantity column and I can run down and tell it how many of each items I received. Not my preferred method. I would much prefer to just go over here and say select all. It will select everything. Do a continue. That's gonna put all of those items on a receiving voucher. If I didn't receive everything, oh, wait a minute, what are these stupid dots? If you get those dots when you're looking at a purchase order or a voucher, you can right click up on the header, go adjust column width, and it will expand out so you can read your item name there. And so you can see which item you're looking at. If I didn't get all of these red 3XL shirts, I could click in here to quantity, and I could change that and say I only got four of those. I didn't get the black ones at all. I can select in there, and I can remove that one. And that's going to adjust the quantities that I actually received on my purchase order. When I've checked everything and everything looks good, I've got a couple of choices. One, I can come over here and I can print tags. I can tell it I want to print all tags. I can tell it document quantity. And I can say print. And it is going to print all of the tags that I ordered. If I ordered six or something, I'm going to get six of that tag. If I ordered 12, I'll get 12 of that tag. So I'll get the appropriate number of tags for however many items I ordered of each item on my purchase order. And I could just print them all out. I can then attach those tags to the merchandise and it's all set to put away uh, either in back stock or put it on the floor. I can also come over here if I have the invoice from that vendor, I can add the invoice number and the billing date on the invoice, as well as 
when that invoice is due. I can also add any discounts or freight charges or fees that that vendor may have charged me to that so that that information is going to go over to my accounting. If desired, when I add discounts, fees, or freight, I can also spread that, those fees or freight, across the cost of my merchandise. So if I was charged $50 freight on this order, and I say close, it adds it down here to the total bill. If I say to spread it, notice my cost of my items, it's going to change because it's spread the cost over all of the items. Some people like that. I don't. I'd rather have my freight show up separately because then it's going to show up on my accounting separately and I can claim it immediately. I don't have to wait till the merchandise is sold to recover that freight charge. And I suppose the advantage of spreading it is you know exactly what the cost of that item is, and so you see your margin better. And you can see it adjusts the margin on the items as well when you spread that cost. You can go either way with spreading freight and fees uh, as desired. So once you have everything in place, you can save it or you can save and print it. If I save and print it, my finished voucher will look like that. All right, next thing is I had some of those items that were back ordered. So you can see that my purchase order list still has a number here. So if I go to my purchase order list and I look at it, I will still see that Acme order because I didn't receive everything. You can see here. How many I received? You can see how many items are still due. And if we were to go down that list, we would find that I still have two of these due to show up and six of those. When those items show up, all I've got to do, just like before, is receive items. Again, I can say how many of each I got. I can say select all and continue. It's going to put those on the purchase order for me. And it only puts the items that were back ordered. It does not put the items I have already received. So I could save that. And now when I look at my purchase order list, I have nothing pending. Any questions? Oh, all right. All right. And so if we look back at our list here, we've looked at uh, creating a purchase order. Uh, we've looked at using existing items, looked at how to add a new item. We looked at editing and deleting a purchase order. We looked at how we can create a voucher either directly or by referencing a purchase order to fix a mistake on a voucher. If you have a voucher that has a mistake, 
you cannot just change it. Receiving history shows you all the vouchers you previously received. If I realize that this purchase order here, which is the one for the items that were back ordered, if I realize when these items show up, they charge me a different cost. Instead of charging me $7, they charge me $8 each on these t-shirts. Well, I don't have an edit option. I cannot change these costs. If I need to change these costs, then I am going to need to copy that purchase order. And that will create an exact copy of that purchase order. I can then close that purchase order, or not close it, but I can then edit my copy. So here on my copy, I can change that cost to $8. And again, I can edit that one to $8. So now I have changed the cost of those items. On this one, I would save or save and print that voucher. When this pop-up pops up, this is saying I've changed cost. That is going to adjust my cost in my inventory. Do I want to do that? Do I want to review it? No, I want to change my cost. I've already done all my checking. When I go back here to my receiving history, I now have two of those vouchers for those two items. One at the new cost, one at the old cost. I need to delete this one, and that's not an option with a voucher. If you need to get rid of a previous voucher, your only option is to copy it and return it, or to reverse it. Reversing now it asks me, I'm reversing this voucher. Do I want to put these items back on a purchase order? No, I don't. And OK. What that will do is that will generate a credit for that vendor. If I had had a invoice number and invoice date entered on that voucher. And so now you'll see I have a voucher that is a return voucher. And I also have one that is reversed. So I've got reversed, which is the original voucher. I have return and reversing, which is the voucher that is the opposite of the one I reversed. And if I were to go look at one of these items, like item number 79, I can see here that my average cost has changed because I made that change to the cost of those items that I received. All right. Entering billing info, that is adding to a receiving voucher when you actually get that invoice from the vendor. You'll see over here, it says needs billing info. That means that when I actually get that information from the vendor, I need to add that billing info. I also want to add a button over here to make that easier, so I'm going to right click under the blue button, go to customize button. I'm going to add a billing info option. I'm going to add a discount fee freight option. I'll save. Discount fee freight. I can add any freight if I haven't already added it. I can also add the billing information. The billing information would be the purchase order number the invoice number from the vendor, 
and the billing date from the vendor, which shows me my invoice due date and when that invoice is due based on the terms I have set. If I was getting different terms, I could come down here and I could change the terms, or I can simply change the invoice due date to that vendor may say that they want their payment. In the case of an item or items that you have prepaid the vendor for, where the vendor wants payment before they send you the merchandise, then I would not go up here and say, mark this voucher as already paid. But I would, down here, set the invoice due date as the day I actually paid that bill on. So if I actually ordered this stuff on the 7th, then I would change that due date to the 7th, and it's going to show up as being due on the 7th when I sync that over to my QuickBooks accounting. And so I will know that I already need to pay that bill, or I've already paid that bill because it's past due. And then on my accounting side, I can say I paid this with a check or with a credit card on whatever date I paid it on. Otherwise, if your market is already paid, it's going to show up in accounting as an item receipt. And under that vendor, you would go to that item receipt and you would change it to a bill received so that it shows up as a bill to be paid. So then you can mark it as paid by whatever method you paid it with. And I'd much rather just send it over straight as a bill so it shows up in my bills so I don't have that extra step to deal with. All right. And that is purchasing and receiving. Anybody have any questions? All right. I'm not hearing any questions. So that is all I've got. Uh, any questions come up, then feel free to uh, give us a call. Uh, the best number is 916-368. 1070 or drop us a note. You can drop us a note to tech at Big Harry Dog. That's T E C H. Or you can drop an email directly to me, Daryl at Big Harry Dog.com. That's D A R R E L L F at Big Harry Dog.com. kind of like you see right here on my little yellow sticky note. So, everybody have a great one. And this uh, webinar will be available on our YouTube site, and they will send you a notice letting you know when it is up there. So, everybody have a great one, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Kathy has a question. Yes, hey, Daryl. Um, what if I find that when it's when my receiving voucher is sent to QuickBooks, that freight has not been added to it, and so that it's not matching up with the the payment side? Can can well, that? Well, you're in trouble. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's it easy be, to fix in accounting. Oh, do I fix it then in QuickBooks versus? Uh, in point of sale? Yeah, I would just fix it in accounting instead of in point of sale. Okay. Uh, so in accounting, you simply go in, open that bill by double clicking on it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the bill itself, you can go down and add a line for freight and what the freight is and adjust the total so it matches what the vendor is asking for. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No? All right. So 
Once again, everybody have a great one, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.